My name is Eddie Sheehan and uh, I'm going to be covering kettlebells for total fitness. Uh, so today I want to talk about blasting fat, uh, how you're going to use kettlebells to increase strength and endurance, improve your cardio fitness and uh, enhance your performance in any sporting activity. Um, so for, I suppose I'll start from my own background, um, I've been lifting kettlebells since 2008, 2009. Um, when I started off, or when, when I found out about kettlebells, there was very little information. Um, I, I, I kind of found them through a, a fitness magazine. Uh, I was looking through some articles and I saw that somebody had done some crazy lifting with a 32 kilo kettlebell over their head for like two or 300 reps. And it kind of got me excited because at the time I was working as a personal trainer and I was doing just a normal gym, gym routine and cardio routine. Uh, and when I read about the kettlebells and the article was really exciting because it explained how you could incorporate your strength training, your power training and your, your cardio with one piece of equipment. So obviously uh, I was intrigued. Um, I had been doing circuit training um, previously to kind of get the same effect. And as I've been doing some martial arts, I wanted, I didn't really want to build up too much bulk. I wanted to build up more, more power and more core strength. So eventually I found a course, uh, a kettlebell training course that was in London and uh, went over there and I started to learn um, so I mean for most of you out there the exercises that you will have seen the main exercise you would have seen would be swings presses and probably snatches um, and obviously there are very technical lifts you know a kettlebell is a lot different to a dumbbell um, so you're going to have to get a lot of good technical training on that um, so after London um, I came home and I started to train with them um, and I was just finding them really, really great. Um, I'll never forget the first time when I, when I started to swing a 16 kilo kettlebell and uh, just the, the effect of, on my cardio and my heart rate was, uh, was really impressive. Um, so I just wanted to do more. I wanted to figure out more um, and how far you could go with weight um, and with different exercises. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about swings and Turkish get-ups and, and presses. And we'll discuss a little bit, I'll discuss a little bit about uh, kettlebell sport, where I further uh, uh, went with the kettlebells and kettlebell workouts. So there's a little bit of a difference between the kettlebell sport and the kettlebell workouts. Um, you maybe you have seen a bit of the sport, maybe not. It's 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 not as as big as as other sports. It's a minority sport. Um, when I go through some of the, the the swings, I'll explain how it differs. But yeah, after after I started getting into the workout kettlebells, I moved on to the sport, which is a kind of a different kind of system altogether. When we when we talk about swings now, and when we talk about like your questions here are really good. Uh, about how effective are kettlebell workouts and the starting weights and grip and endurance. So there was a little bit of a difference between, there is a big difference between kettlebell sport and kettlebell workout, but I can discuss that as well. Um, so with, with, with kettlebells, there's obviously different types of kettlebells. Okay, so you might see when you go to the shop, you might find a sports shop, you might find some plastic ones or you might find some cast iron, and then if you go online, my, my preferred kettlebell would be a competition style kettlebell. So this one, this is an A, uh, 10 kilo, okay? And this is 16 kilo. So with the competition bells, they're actually all the same diameter. So they all look the same weight, they're all different weights. With the cast iron ones, they're a little bit different. So. The one I have here on my left is like eight kilo. So you can see that the, the mass, there's less mass. But the only thing is with these, uh, 
it's, it, it, it lands a little bit differently on your arm. Um, so when I'm in this position, depends on the gap here. So some of them are very, very good for snatching and some are a little bit uncomfortable. But we can adapt and change your, your workouts for that. Okay. Um, when you, the difference between a kettlebell and a dumbbell. So obviously you can see it here, the weight on the dumbbell is, is pushing down through your hand, okay? So it's either side. The weight on the kettlebell is off, okay? It's going to push you back to the side. So immediately you can see that it's going to move differently, okay? So when the weight is off, off the center. I mean, this can be great for obviously developing core and what the kettlebell is mainly famous for is ballistic movements. So the swing and the snatch, okay? They're all power movements, but also we have a lot of movements that can develop strength, okay? Good strength. When we hold a kettlebell, it's gonna be hold, you're gonna hold it a little bit differently to a dumbbell. I want to rack up a dumbbell. Okay, it's it's probably not going to be as comfortable when I'm holding it here. Um, overhead, it's not going to be too bad. But if I wanted to do repetitions of cleans, I think I'm going to prefer to use my kettlebell. But when the kettlebell lies in this position, it's always going to be kind of pulling you away. And the same when we're overhead. Okay, do you see the way it's going to pull back on your on your shoulder. So it's great for working a shoulder stability, especially in the overhead position. I mean, some of the most basic exercises you can do with a kettlebell would be a rack walk, where I'm holding my kettlebell and moving around. So this is a good challenge for the core. Okay, I don't want to be sinking. I want to be keeping everything nice and straight. Same when I'm overhead, a walking overhead hold is a great challenge, again, for the core and for the shoulder, shoulder stability. So there is a little bit difference where the kettlebell is lying as opposed to a dumbbell. Okay, sometimes when you start off lifting the bells, it can give you a little bit of a slight pain on your forearm. You'll get used to that, but some people are wear like guards. Sometimes you can get like, like almost like sweatbands and some of them have inserts in it to protect you from the connection with the, the kettlebell on your forearm. Uh, really what we want is we want our technique to be good enough that there's not enough, there's not banging on the forearm. Um, at the beginning, especially with snatches, the tendency is for the kettlebell to flip and to, to, to bang off the arm. But if you get a good coach, if you get a good course, like the Profi kettlebell course, uh, you're going to learn how to perform your kettlebell snatches correctly without the impact on the forearms. Okay. So the weights of the kettlebells can vary. So we had a question there about ideal kettlebell weights starting for male and female. Okay, if this is somebody who's brand new to kettlebells, I mean, you can get a lot of work done with a 12 kilo kettlebells for ladies and a 16 for men. But obviously then you have to take into account has this person prior weight training or prior fitness training. Um, if they haven't done anything at all, then you're gonna to have to drop that weight down again. And maybe start with eight or 10 kilos for ladies, or maybe even a 12 to 14 kilo for men. Um, you can, obviously the, the stronger the person then, the more that you could, more weight that you can lift. Um, with regard to the exercises, this, for the swings, you're going to need a heavier weight because it's just going to stop you from trying to muscle the weight up. Um, and with other technical issues like Turkish get-ups, windmills, or presses, which I'm going to show you all of these ones, uh, you're going to have, you're going to use a less of a weight, okay, for safety until you, uh, until you improve your technique. Yeah, so I also, not only with the dumbbells, but with, with barbells. So when we talk about kettlebells, um, 
we, we, we need to understand that you, you can do your kettlebells at home in a small space. So if you have a six by four space, we can perform all of the exercises that you want to do. So in this way, you don't have to spend a lot of money on gym equipment. Um, you don't have to buy too many kettlebells and then you don't have to have too, many, too much space. Of course, you have to be careful about what's over your head, okay? You don't want to be doing it in a room with your favorite chandelier. Okay, so when we talk about comparing it to other weights, like a barbell. So for instance, if we wanted to do a barbell deadlift, okay? Again, for beginners, it's, it's a tough technical lift. Now, if, you, if you don't have the right mobility and the right technique, okay, to perform, your barbell tennis. With your kettlebell, we get away a little bit more with movements and with mobility. So to perform a kettlebell deadlift, okay, we're, we're going to position the bell in between the legs, in between the feet and the line between your heels. It's going to be a lot easier to get into that position to raise up. So this can be a great exercise for beginners. Okay, your kettlebell deadlift. So you can also, this would be the precursor to swing because swing is a majorly hip, uh, hip movement. So for, for ease of use, comparing it to, to other pieces of equipment, like a barbell, you can, you can, you can do a lot more exercises um, that possibly you won't, wouldn't be able to do with a barbell. Another example would be front squats, okay, with a barbell. A lot of people might find this position tough to get into. It might be hard on their wrists, okay, it might be hard on their shoulders, and they might not get the depth that, that they need on your front squats. So we could, we could replace the front squat with either one kettlebell or two kettlebells. So one of the most common ones would be the goblet squat. So the weight again is in front of your body. I don't have the problems with my wrist or with my shoulders to get into the correct position for when I'm doing my goblet squats. Of course, you can hold the kettlebell then whatever way is you want for a variety. And the kettlebell is always in front. So the goblet squat, or anything with kettlebell in front is really, really good core exercise, as well as working your legs. If you have two bells, and then we get to do them together. Okay. Again, a lot of people will find that a lot easier to do than trying to do a barbell front squat. So we'll move on to the swing. So I have a few studies here also to show you that have been done over the years. So just to answer that question on the weights, I hope I answered that question. Uh, will I build strength or endurance with a kettlebell? Okay, another good question. So it depends on the exercises you're doing um, and it depends on the weight and the rep range. So to build strength, so where do you want to build strength? If you want to strengthen up your legs, you could do your goblet squat that I just, I just performed there. So it's a really good leg exercise. So again, you can hold your kettlebell whichever way you want, in nice and tight. Okay, we're going to develop really good leg strength there. We can bring in our deadlifts, okay, our kettlebell deadlifts which you can do with one, or you could do with single legs. Again, the range and the amount of exercises we can do, the variety is huge. For strength in upper body, um, famous kettlebell exercise would be, a lot used is the military press, okay? Okay, when we're doing, these exercises, in order to develop strength, we want tension, 
Okay, so with your squats, we want to keep our glutes tight. We want to focus on driving the hips forward and keeping the legs tight from the bottom to the top. And it's the same with the press. So when I press head and bell, okay, I want my whole body to be tight. I'm not just pressing with one arm and just thinking about this. I'm thinking about strengthening up all my legs, my core, even the other arm. I'm going to press. So as most, the most tension I have, if I can have as much as possible, it's going to get that kettlebell up a lot easier. I don't want to be loose. So the same with your deadlift. Um, deadlifting the kettlebell, we want to make sure that your whole body is nice and tight. So for endurance, you can also build great endurance with the higher rep ranges. So for example, you can just get a lighter weight if you wanted to do your, your, your squats or your presses, or we can work, we work a lot of uh, the muscle, compound muscle when we do a snatch. So overall, our body is going to build great endurance because it's a huge, huge exercise for working the legs and the core, the grip and the pulling muscles. And then I have another question there. Uh, the grip, should it be tight or loose when holding a kettlebell? Okay, again, this will depend on the exercise that you're doing. So when you're doing your swings, so I'm just gonna share, maybe I'll share a video there on, uh, on swing. So I'm gonna do the front view, I'm gonna talk, talk through it. Okay, so I'm just going to do it. Okay, so for the swings, I'll go front view and side view. Okay, you're gonna see with the swing, it's a very, very powerful movement. Okay, so with the deadlift, okay, it's the same hip hinge, we're gonna come up and drive our hips forward. And now with the swing, it's the same movement, but we're just gonna perform it with more power. We're gonna keep our feet nice and flat. We're gonna hip hinge at the back and then drive our legs forward. So when you drive your hips forward, you're gonna squeeze your glutes, your hamstrings, and your core. So that's going to develop great endurance in those muscles. Again, depending on the rep range you do. If you were looking to improve your power and say vertical leap, the swing is a, is a really, really good exercise. Again, you would probably do it in five to 10 uh, rep ranges and just really focusing on, on the power, hip, hip drive, with each rep, okay? So I'll just show you from side view. Okay, it's really important when we perform the swing that when you drive forward, you squeeze your glutes, okay? When you squeeze your glutes, you're going to come forward, you're going to tighten your quads as well. Make sure that your core is engaged. So when we're in this position, I'm not leaning back, okay? Imagine that you're in a plank position. If you've done a plank before and you're in a nice tight position, at the top of your swing, you're going to feel that core engagement, quad and glutes engagement, okay? That's going to protect your back. So one of the biggest faults with swings is people leaning back too far, not engaging their core and glutes at the top. So if we're going to try and improve our power, let's say our vertical leap, our change of direction, we're going to be doing short, heavy reps, really explosive. You say even like five reps, 
five to eight reps. So that, that's going to really improve that. So from my own experience, I've, I've, I've been lucky enough to train with our local athletes here and uh, over the course of their pre-competition uh, pre training, we included swings, you're going to see Turkish get-ups and snatches. Well, this what we did before the start of the of the of the year was we tested them all with their vertical leap. Um, obviously, they did their track 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 tests as well. But at the end of their training program, we tested them again, and they all had a significant improvement in their vertical leap. And I mean, we have to take. I mean, a lot of these were young, so we didn't do any heavy squats. Uh, we didn't do any heavy weights, like if you're talking 12, 15, 16 year olds, uh, we wanted to develop power in that kind of way. And, and it worked a treat. Okay, if you were looking to build your cardio, um, find yourself a weight that's manageable to lift, and we could perform our swings in a in time set protocol. So if you wanted to improve your, your heart rate, um, and I recommend if you're training anyway, that uh, either with kettlebells or if you're looking to improve your heart rate that you should probably wear a heart rate monitor. And um, so when I'm doing my own kettlebell training, I'll always wear this and I can read it off my, my phone. So where my heart rate is. Um, when you, if, if, if you get to do your next session with your kettlebells and you have a heart rate monitor, check it out. You're going to see how high your heart rate goes and you're just going to be without a doubt, sure that your cardio is going to improve. So if you wanted to work on improving your cardio, we could do the time sets. So say we could do 20 seconds on, but we all have our uh, Tabata sets. So again, we'll use this. Use your time on your Tabata sets. And you give yourself 10 seconds rest and, and complete maybe six rounds of that. Depends on how many you want to complete. You could, you could change that time to, uh, to suit your own need or your client's needs. Maybe you wanted to do 30 seconds work, maybe 15 seconds rest. But if you're wearing a monitor, you'd be able to judge by how high your heart rate goes. So if I wanted to work up to 75% of my max heart rate, then I'm going to swing till I kind of get it up close enough to that. Take your 10 seconds rest or 15 seconds rest. Watch the heart rate come down and go again. Maybe you might want to do have more rest. So maybe you might want to go a split of one to one. So maybe whatever you do for work, say 30 seconds, you could do 30 seconds rest. So you can imagine, I mean, we've all heard about interval training where you want to get your heart rate up high let the heart rate come down. And it's got a huge effect on cardio and calorie burn. Uh, it's got a huge metabolic effect. So when you do your interval training, it's not going to be how many calories I burnt there and then. It's, there's going to be a 24 hour epoch effect, which is exercise post oxygen consumption. So for your body, in order for your body to come back to a steady state, you're going to have to burn, burn more calories, okay? So with kettlebells, you can perform those in a short period of time. So, I mean, you don't have to do an hour's kettlebells to get the effect that you want. So you pick up your, your kettlebell, you do your swings. Even if you just did those six sets, maybe 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, check out the effect that you're gonna get from that. Uh, it's huge. And uh, maybe then, you know, when you develop your technique a little bit better or you wanna add in more, you could put a kettlebell exercise in, maybe maybe change to a, a pushing pushing exercise after that. So if I wanted to do, if I wanted to make it tougher, I could do my swings, and then I could bring in my presses. And it's going to increase the load. It's going to change the muscles that you're using. So it's going to increase the increase the heart rate maybe a little bit more, and have more of a more of a beneficial effect if we're going for calorie burn and um, if we want to get the heart rate up okay 
So there has been plenty of studies that have been done um, on kettlebells, and I'm going to show you now one or two. Um, I'm just going to check your questions there. So the grip, yeah, I, I read it out, but I didn't answer the question. So the grip, should it be tight or loose? Yeah, so you're going to have a tight grip when you're doing muscle uh, exercises that where you want to be create tension. Okay, you're going to want to create tension on your swings, your two hand swings, and you're going to want to create tension on your presses. So when I'm pressing the kettlebell overhead, my legs are straight, I want to squeeze that bell. Okay, I'm going to squeeze that bell so hard, it's going to create really good tension in my arm. It's going to help me press that kettlebell overhead. I'm not going to release it. The same with swings, okay? So I'm going to grip it. Okay, it's not going to be light. It's going to be gripped nice and hard. I'm going to create that tension. But what I don't want to do on my swings is use my arms. It's not a lateral raise, okay? The power is coming from your hips and then your arms are guiding up your, your kettlebell. Um, so I hope that answers your question about the grip. Um, when we're snatching, maybe, maybe the question was more so about snatching. When you're snatching a kettlebell, you don't want to grip it. So maybe when I get onto the snatch now, I'm just going to show you that one. Uh, my lower back is hurting me when I use kettlebells for swings. What is the issue? Um, maybe I answered a little bit of that. So if you're swinging the kettlebell and if you're not engaging your core and your glutes, your erector spina muscles are going to take the work and they're going to take the load. So I was just trying to explain if you're doing your plank on the floor on your elbows, okay, and we're getting nice and tight and we're actively engaging our core and tilting our pelvis. We want to think about that being in the same position at the top of your swing. So when I swing forward or when I'm locked here, my quads are tight, my glutes are tight, my core is tight. This is going to protect your back. Also, a few common mistakes with the swing, as I explained with the leaning back, or maybe going too low. So people might swing too low and round their back. Okay, this is a very bad thing to do because obviously the weight then is going into my, uh, again, my erector spina muscles. When you're swinging, when you're picking the kettlebell up, retract those shoulder blades. When I'm in the back of my swing, okay, I'm looking forward, my back is straight. I'm trying to retract those shoulder blades. I want to feel the weight building in my hamstrings and my glutes on the back swing and not in my back. Okay, so I don't want to be, I want to straighten my back. So at the back face, shoulders back, chest out, okay? You're going to feel that your lats are retracted. And in the top face, keep your core engaged and keep your glutes and quads tight. That should protect your back from uh, excessive strain. Okay, good question. So how effective is a kettlebell workout? Very effective. Uh, again, like I said, if you really want to gauge it, part of the fact that you're exhausted after is to put a heart rate monitor on, check where your heart rate was throughout your workout and check to see how many calories you've burned. Um, and that won't be the amount of calories that you're gonna burn throughout the day. You would burn more after that just to get your body back to a steady, steady uh, state. Okay. Is it best to use shoes or barefoot when using kettlebells? That's another great question. So I remember when, uh, when I started off, um, when I was going to a few of the training courses, I could see a lot of people in their socks or in their feet. And uh, I didn't really understand why, why they were doing it. But when you do it, you will understand. So especially in the swings, because when we wear runners, they're very chunky and there's a lot of sole on it. So it's difficult to feel on the floor where you are with your feet. Um, so when you are performing in socks or in feet, 
you can feel where the weight is distributed. Okay, so for example, when we do a swing, I want to make sure that when I'm swinging forward, when I'm swinging back, that my feet are flat. Okay, a lot of people might want to come up on their heels when they swing forward. That's really bad because if I come up on my heels, I know I'm not engaging my core or my glutes, sorry, my glutes and my hamstrings. Okay, I'm, I'm reaching forward. The bell is going too far forward and it's putting pressure on their back. So when I'm in bare feet, I can feel where my feet are when I'm swinging, okay? When I swing forward, I want to feel, I mean, you're going to feel a lot of weight. Let's say you want the weight on your midfoot. You don't want it too far forward. Sometimes it might go back, okay? But we try not, to, sometimes your toes might come up, but we try not to allow that to happen. Okay, we try to keep everything flat. So if you take the runners off, try with the runners on, uh, try with your runners off, you're going to see a massive difference. In your stability, maybe you're not moving forward as much or back as much. You should feel a lot of that stronger. You should feel that you have good balance um, and maybe more control. With, uh, with swings, that's a good one. Uh, snatches, maybe the same. Um, for Turkish get ups and other exercises, you can choose. You can choose yourself. The thing is, you know. Um, a lot of gyms probably won't allow you to uh, go around your bare feet, but I'm sure you can do it at home. But it's a good idea to try it out and see what works for you. Um, but definitely on the swings, if you wanted to incorporate some swings and, in, and some body weight exercises, it would be great because then you don't have to worry about changing shoes or, you know, you can just work with, with how you are. Okay. So. Can you make a hypertrophy program with kettlebells? Yes, I'll go and answer that one now in a second. So I'm just going to bring up a, I'm just going to bring up a study there now. So I need to share a screen. Okay. Okay. So I hope we can all see that. So there's a few studies that have been done. Um, one was done by the American Council on Exercise. And the study was to analyze the energy cost and exercise intensity of kettlebell workouts. Okay, this was, I think this was like 2012. So, The subjects used a six, 12, 16, and 20 kilo kettlebell, and they performed snatches to a specific cadence uh, during every minute, okay? So they had first minute, eight repetitions every sec seven seconds, second minute, 12 repetitions uh, every five seconds, third minute, 15, every uh, to rate of one snatch every four seconds. So they speed it up. Um, the last minutes they went all out. So then they recorded the heart rate and the oxygen consumption and their results. Okay, so during the 20 minute workout, the average calorie burn was 272 calories. Okay, that's a lot for 20 minutes, 272 calories. So that's 27 calories a minute. Uh, we estimated oxygen consumption and how many calories they were burned was, no, 13.6 calories per minute, but we also measured the blood lactate. So anaerobically, they were burning another six calories per minute. So they were burning at least 20.2 calories per minute. So that's equivalent to running six minute miles. Okay, so the only other thing that burns that many calories is cross-country skiing at an uphill fast pace. Okay, so that would be the answer to the question on the workout. So will I build, uh, how effective is a kettlebell workout? So that you can see there from the ACE study, 
you're, you can burn up to 20 calories per minute. Okay, so obviously when it comes to snatching, you have to make sure that your technique is, uh, is very good because you don't want to hurt your arm. You want to make sure that you're working the right muscle groups and the right technique. But the, 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 uh, the, uh, the ability to burn calories and get the heart rate up is absolutely huge. Um, and again, it only takes a short amount of time. So if you were working on one minute on, let's say one minute on your left arm, rest for a few seconds, one minute on your right arm, or either just do one minute, one minute, your heart rate's gonna be way up. You're gonna be burning lots of calories. So it is a huge, uh, hugely effective workout. Okay, can you make a hypertrophy program with kettlebells? Okay, we'll come back to that, back to that one in a second. So, uh, with regard to the snatch then. So, when, uh, when we're teaching on the Profi fitness course, I'll always teach uh, swings and then snatches. So, the snatches is another very, very good exercise. So, I just want to demonstrate it there. I have some videos here, but it just takes me too long to bring them up. Uh, so, we're just going to demo. Okay, so it's really important at the beginning that you learn your swings, your two-handed swings to, in, to, uh, to basically nail down that hip drive, okay? We wanna make sure that your core is tight as well. What we can do after your swings, to, before we move on to the snatch, is just work on single arm. Okay, so the snatch then is just basically a pull and then reaching overhead. So it's, you wouldn't consider the, the snatch exercise a shoulder lifting exercise. It is all about the hip drive and then a catch at the top. So to answer the question about grip with snatch, you're not going to grip the kettlebell really hard on this one because when the kettlebell comes over your from your pull position from here overhead the handle is going to twist in your hand so when that happens it's best to keep a lighter grip to allow your hand the kettlebell to move in your hand if i grip it too much it's going to pull my skin and you're going to end up with some blisters so try not to over grip in that position. I know it's difficult when you think it's probably gonna fly up and hit the roof or, or drop, but you, it's better to have a looser grip for your snatch, okay? Otherwise, what happens is when people come overhead, the kettlebell stops and then bangs on their hand. Okay, we need to open the hand, let it come around. Okay, so that's the snatch. So that's the study that was done with ACE on the calorie burn. So the participants were made to do a certain amount of snatches and then increase the pace. And then they recorded the heart rate. So if you want to improve your cardiovascular endurance, without a doubt, it's gonna work. Okay, that's the snatch. So, so what kettlebell movements are covered in the course? In the Profi Fitness Kettlebell course, um, the movements that are covered with kettlebells are kettlebell deadlifts, kettlebell swings, kettlebell cleans, snatches, windmills, Turkish get-ups, goblet squats, okay. And a few more thrown in there just for a bit of fun. So yeah, there's, plenty in that course um, and you're going to learn how to do them all with perfect technique so that you're not going to hurt yourself so if you're a fitness enthusiast or if you're a PT who wants to kind of uh, improve on their technique or you know wants to learn a little bit more that's the course that you should be doing so 
that's the snatch. Okay, so we can, when, when, you're, when you're teaching the snatch or when you're using the snatch, you can, you can vary it a little bit. I mean, originally the snatch movement um, with regard to sport was done as a half snatch. So there's no set rule to say that I just have to do snatches. I mean, you can put some swings in there or you could do some half snatches. So normal snatch. Now what I like to teach for beginners or for somebody, maybe they don't like the contact over their hands too much, put in a few swings. And then a snatch. So what we can do by adding the swing, swings is also reduce the intensity and reduce the heart rate. So if you want to just do a few more repetitions on your hand, on your arm, uh, without driving the heart rate up too much, you can put in some swings. Um, also a half snatch. So when people start off snatching at the beginning, um, they might find the catch bit a bit tricky. So you could just bring it down and then snatch. Well, a half snatch. So way back, before kettlebell sport started, and when it started, the uh, half snatch was the main snatch competition part of it. Um, and then it changed to, to full snatch. Okay. So any more questions? So the hypertrophy program. So hypertrophy, so mainly kettlebells for a hypertrophy, you're gonna to want to be doing, uh, you wanna be holding tension for 45 seconds to a minute. So as well, you could work them for, for your legs, for your goblet squats. You could work them for your shoulders, for shoulder presses. Um, or you could work them for maybe single arm rows. So some of the traditional lifts. But I think what kettlebells are great for um, are the ballistic movements. So your swings and your snatches for getting the heart rate up. You're still going to develop a great amount of strength, but it's like a full body strength. So when you perform your swings correctly, you're not just hitting your, your legs. You mean you're hitting your glutes, your quads, your core. You know when you do them correctly the next day and even just feel how the legs are after working. Um, same with the, the, uh, the snatches. I mean, you're working your full body. And when you snatch as well, there's a little bit of rotation going on there. You don't really see it. So it's a really, really good exercise for your core as well, if it's done correctly. So I'm just gonna move on to uh, another exercise, which is a huge core exercise for, uh, for kettlebells. And it's the, uh, it's the Turkish kettle. So let me just see if I can share it here because I don't want to talk about it and try and do it at the same time, which is a little bit difficult. Okay. Okay. And after losing that burning. Okay, I don't know if we saw that. Did anybody see that? Okay, did we see no? <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, I'm just, I'm just no good at this uh, sharing, sharing post. So I'm just going to show you the Turkish get up. Okay, that was just a waste there of two minutes. Okay, so 
Turkey scale up. Okay, I'm going to perform it and then maybe chat to it a little bit. So this is a really, really, really good core exercise. Okay. Okay, so that's Turkish ghetto. So I'm just gonna break down a few, a few of the moves on it just to show you why this is so beneficial, okay? So in each part of these movements, we're going to be hitting different parts of the body. Okay, so I'm just trying to explain that as we do it. So from the beginning, we're gonna start straight away working our shoulders. So from the bottom position, we're working our, our, our chest and our shoulder in our press. Okay, when we're in this position here, we're really, really working on the shoulder complex and keeping it nice and stable here. So it's a great one for working on strengthening the shoulder, okay? Up to this position here, we're working on our core and here. So we're really, really, really good position to be in. So you can see there, I'm working the shoulders, the triceps and the core. Okay, in this. So when it's done correctly, you can see like we all perform bridges and some sort of uh, some sort of glute work. So now we can put all that together. So we can work our we can work our core, our, sh our shoulders, our core, our glutes, our core here. Okay, it's like hip thrusts, okay? We all do our one leg hip thrusts. So we're working on the hamstrings here, we're working on the glutes. We're coming into a bridge. So we're working our obliques, we're working our core really well. Okay, under transition, we're working on our mobility in our hips. So watch this, drop, move. So here I'm working on really good hip mobility, hip flexibility, and then some nice one leg work when I step up. Okay, and then I'm gonna step down. So, throughout all of that, if we do it correctly, our shoulder is gonna develop great strength and great flexibility, because we're gonna be moving as we're, as we're, we're going to be moving the shoulder as we're stepping, as we're moving in the exercise. Also our legs are gonna get great work. This overhead forward lunge, we're going to use our legs, we're going to use our core. And you know, it's a great core exercise, especially when the kettlebell is overhead. So I mean, they can be done at the start of a workout, at the end, or just as a workout. So personally for me, I've had some clients who, when they saw it, got really excited about it and wanted to learn how to do it. So what we did then was we started with a light weight and then we just moved up gradually for a few months until they were able to complete it with a heavy weight. And then what I did was I put the heart rate monitor on again. I love heart rate monitors. And I wanted to check the, the, the work intensity and basically just to see how the heart was working as well. So not only was he working on core strength and, 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 and leg strength on those ones, uh, his heart rate was up. So, you know, if you can do them yourself already, test it out, you know, do, do one on each arm, maybe set your timer for 10 minutes. There's your 10 minute workout. You don't really have to do too much after that. Um, especially if you have a weight that's challenging, just make sure that when you're doing that, that your shoulder is packed in tight and that your technique is correct. You don't want that kettlebell dropping on your head. Okay. So yeah, so I said you can put that in the start of your workout or the end, or just if you're going to do it at the end, very lightweight. Um, if you're going to do it as a workout, you can probably get a more of a challenging weight, but you're really hitting everything on that that exercise. Again, that's one that's covered on the Profi on the Profi Fitness course. So that would have been made famous. Well, 
I just say made famous, but a lot of um, back in the early 2000s, a lot of the jujitsu guys before MMA and wrestlers would use this and they would have it in their magazines and in their training regimes um, because of the because of the the benefit of your of, of strengthening your core and also from working working from a bottom up position for the wrestlers they were developing really good strength from the floor up so they they really like that that exercise do you cover the variations sorry just another question there do you cover the variations of kettlebell movements Turkish kettlebell variations side swings hip presses etc yes um we cover plenty of variations um, and then when somebody asks, I won't say no. Um, there's, there's lots of uh, variations that we could do. Okay, with, if you want a really tricky one, okay. So with regard to the Turkish getup, I better do it now. So maybe I'll pick up my weight. I'll try not drop it on my head. Okay. Yeah, we'll give this a go. So, for your Turkish get up, we can also do it in a bottoms up position. Okay, so the challenge here now is with your grip and with your shoulder. You're trying to keep the kettlebell stable. You don't want it to flick to either side, and then you're going to do your Get up at the same time. You shouldn't really be talking when you're doing it. <sighs> Bend it down. Okay, so fun variation of kettlebell Turkish get up, bottoms up style. Um, somebody says, can you demo some renegade roll variations with the kettlebell? Okay, I could dem demonstrate. Okay, let me see. So renegade roll variation. I mean the main very the main one is is just your roll from here. Okay, keeping your hips nice and straight and not moving them side to side. Uh, a lot of people might want to do it, add a push up in at the same time. So push. And then raise. Push. And then raise. And renegade roll variations. In your in your plank position, some people might like to do reach shoes. Again, it's a it's not a renegade roll, which is a plank position with a bit of variety. I like to use them for push-ups as well. So when you're doing a push-up position, you can either grab the top of or the bottom to do your push-ups. But a nice one to get a lot of work in on your arm would be to do it from the top, come down, and then when you come up, come up onto one hand. Okay, that's a great one for core and also for working your shoulders chest when you come to that top position you're going to see your triceps get a really good workout on that um so i want to just to cover workouts there so with regard to um how would you structure it again it depends on what you want right so if you're in for a quick heart rate and calorie burn go with time sets so Pick maybe two exercises, pick one. Set your clock for 20 seconds or 30 seconds on, 10 seconds, 15 seconds off, and blast through it. Maybe six or 10 rounds. You're gonna get a really good, quick workout with that. I mean, max, I mean, including your warm up is 20 minutes. Um, if you wanted, you could include, you could include some body weight in it. So if you want to do your, say for example, your swings, I want to incorporate something like a plank push-up. So 
So if I set my clock for 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, but I have two exercises, I have my swings, I have my plank push-ups, and maybe go 10 rounds. I mean, there's my workout done. Um, also, what you could do when you learn all of your kettlebell routine and all of your exercises, you can put them into a flow. So say we wanted to do a kettlebell flow with a medium exercise, I might do, okay, I might do cleans. So we could start with, let's say three reps of everything, three cleans on the other arm, and then presses, change arms, we can move to snatches for three reps. Change arms. That's three exercises. Then you put in another leg one, reverse, lunge. Change arms. Okay, and then back. And then take a break. So again, you could work on increasing reps or descending reps. So I could work on, even if you wanted to go one rep each side, second round, two reps, third round, three reps, up to five. Take a break and repeat that a few times. Okay, that's gonna have a really, really good uh, effect. What is the optimal range of kettlebell flows? Yeah, so I think I, uh, I've, I think I answered that one there. I don't know whether you asked me that before or after I answered it, but yeah, so I'd work with five reps max. After that, then uh, you're probably gonna have to reduce the amount of uh, exercise you're putting into your flow. But three to five is perfect. You'll see again, I mean, check your heart rate. I mean, it's gonna be up. I get exercises that flow well, well into each other so that I don't have to put the bell down. Because when I do my flow, I want to be able to move to this different exercises. So I want to, I want to change it around. And press, and then we move. So keep it, keep it different, keep it spiced up. Always include a leg, a press, and a snatch. Um, and that's gonna keep you going. Okay, so that's, a, that's like a flow. That's like a combination exercise. And then you have your time sets. And of course, then you could do traditional circuits. So what I like to do with the circuits is put in one kettlebell exercise and then one body weight exercise. So you could do, for example, like I just did there, you could do a swing. Then you could do a, a plank push up for your core. You could pop back up and you could do some military presses. You could go back down onto the floor and you could do some, maybe some, uh, some side dips. Um, also then you could even put in a, like a, a traditional dumbbell exercise, like a roll. I mean, the, the options are endless really on what you could do. Uh, the main thing is just to keep it, keep the technique perfect. So when you feel like you're, your technique is gone. If, if you're in a position where, okay, that rep was a bit too tired on that rep, you need to change. So we don't want to be hurting ourselves with incorrect technique. And believe me, the longer that you're trying to do a, a reps or the longer the sets, you're going to kind of fade out a little bit. Uh, you're going to get a bit fatigued and you don't want to cause any uh, injury. Could you demonstrate a couple of windmill variations? Okay. Windmill variations, okay. Thank you, Carmen, for that. So let's say we can do, there are a few different ones we can do. So you have, okay, you have your traditional windmill where you're reaching down to the floor. So uh, you can slide down either leg 
So if you want to take that arm out, we can bring it behind. Also, you could do a, for people who maybe struggle with their shoulder, maybe the mobility isn't there, start with a, a windmill from the floor. So hold it, one dumbbell on the floor. Okay, no, no, nothing here. So we're getting the same weight uh, feedback in our core, but the shoulder just isn't taking the effort. Okay, so if you have somebody who struggles with the overhead, okay, alternatively, we could go, we could do a, a two bells, we could do a two together. Okay, and if that isn't enough for you, can you come down and bring it up? Okay, if that's not enough, bring it up, bring it up, and then swap. Okay, uh, also you could do your weight metal from the floor. And this would be modified for people with a little bit less movement or mobility. Or if you want another challenge again, do it with the bottoms up. Okay. So that's just a few different varieties there. I hope uh, there were enough for you. So, any more questions? So what are the benefits of exercises such as figure eight and around the world? Around the world is a really good one for warming up the shoulders. Okay, so it's this one. And also you get a lovely stretch on your triceps when the bell is hanging down. Really nice stretch here. So it's great for warming up the shoulders. Uh, figure eight, uh, again, just nice for a warm up routine. Just to get everything trying to flow there. <laughs> That's the figure eight. So I would use those ones in a warm up. So figure eight and around the world for warming up the shoulders, and warming, up, warming up the hips. You're welcome, Carmen. Okay, everyone. So hope you enjoyed that.